All right, so here's where we're at today. I took the uh, magnetic part off of the motor. As you can see, I have some nice ceramic magnets in there. And I was a little disappointed. I counted 24 magnets on here, and there's 36 of these posts. So the magnets don't line up directly with the uh, stator here. And so that kind of gave me a little problem. And you can see what I did, what I'm trying to do, actually I should say, uh, if you had 36 of these, the way it was wound before, is there's actually three coils. You'd have one, two, three, and then, then one would go to the next post, which works with the magnets because they're 24. And if you take 36 and divide it by three, you get 12. So what that was put doing is I'd have a north and a south and then a north. And so these were all, each, no matter which winding it was on, they'd always be on the same faced magnet. So you would never have a north and a south. It would always be north, north, or south, south. So what I'm trying to do now is get more torque out of this. Um, and so what I've done is I've wound two coils together and I'd skip one and then two together and so that'll still give me 12 faces but you're I'm doubling the magnetic induction with adding two coils instead of just one coil so if that makes sense what I did was I kind of just experimented and pulled all the coils off individually and then I realized what I needed to do and so then I soldered one of the coils back together and then the other two what I did was I let's see where did I start right here um, these two coils are together so they're both facing the same direction so I just put the two the in and then the out together and I skipped this one and went to this coil to the input and the output and then back into the in of this one and it come out and skip this one and it went to these quills. So that's what I did sequentially all through here. I have two together, wound the same direction, and then skip one. And then two together and then skip one. All the way back around to where it came to here and then it came back out. So what I have now is still one quill and then these two are wound all the way back around so I have the in and then it comes back out here. Um, I'll probably draw that on a piece of paper just to make it a little more simplified but anyway there it is. I'm now going to put it all together and see what she looks like. See if I can get it running. Okay so I buttoned it back up after putting the wires into two coils and I hooked them up here to my little circuit and I'm going to test it at 35 volts and 2 amps total. Um, I also hooked up my little oscilloscope here so we can see what's coming off the flyback on this little uh, diode here and that's going to be the charging part of the circuit. Um, yeah, um, I already run it and it's kind of disappointing. I was expecting uh, with two coils I would have twice the amount of torque and really what I'll have happen was that it runs a little bit quieter and a little bit smoother and you'll see the difference on the uh, oscilloscope. So let me hook it up the power and give it a little turn. Okay. So it's a little bit quieter still running about the same speed for 35 volts. It's still relatively easy to stop it with one hand. I was expecting twice the torque. Um, what you see over here on the oscilloscope, this is where the charging spikes are. If you look here, let me see, show you the settings real quick. On the red channel, it's just set at 10 volts. On the green channel, it's set at 50 volts. And those are 367 volt spikes. And what 
what's really interesting is I'm getting a little bit of a feedback waveform on the input. And that's just the power coming in to the circuit right here. I've got a little, got my red line. Just checking that, and there's a little bit of a waveform, and you'll see that better here whenever I adjust it. Let's see, let's see if I can go up here, change that to 5 volts so you can see the waveform a little bit better. There you go. So that's kind of feedback coming back into the power supply. That's not coming out of it, that's going back in. And here is what happens when I'm going to hook up my capacitor. And you see that waveform jump way up to the top. That's, t that's where it's showing. Three. So that's with the capacitor on. And that's without. So here is what it's going to look like when we hook up to the other power line. Now this one is one that we didn't change. It's still just a single coil similar to what we were running previously. It's a little bit higher RPM so it's a little bit noisier. But you can see the waveform has changed a lot. There's actually a second spike there. We're actually getting a ringing effect off of the single coil rather than the modified double coil. And change this back to 10 volts. So you can see a little bit better. And there's that, that's the input line. We're getting a spike coming back into the power supply. Let me change the, so you can see a little bit better here, the ringing. There you go. So you can see, as soon as that transistor shuts off, there's a huge spike and then a ringing effect for a brief moment before it shuts off. And that's what charges these batteries back up. So anyway, I thought that was interesting to show. Not the uh, result I was expecting. I figured a double coil would work a lot better than a single coil. But it turns out, uh, it may just run the best the way, way it came from from the factory instead of modifying it. Anyway, we'll keep playing with this and see what else we can come up with. Okay, so I finally figured out what I need to do to get more torque out of this motor. Um, previously I tried rewiring it so that I had double the coil mass and I was hoping that would have more magnetic uh, induction on this thing and it really didn't seem to help it that much. So I got to thinking, I have two coils still here and why don't I just hook up two different circuits to each coil and that should double my torque and that was the ticket that's what works on this thing so I have my regular circuit that I had in my previous video and then I built another one to run the second circuit so here's the outputs of one coil so here's my input and my output or vice versa it really doesn't matter with the circuit you can hook them up either direction. And then here's the other coil, the in and out of those. Okay, so well, I'm gonna start it up and then you can see what difference it makes. Uh, let's start down here at 30 volts. Okay, so you can see right there at 30 volts, it's almost half an amp. Covering right around 45, 0.45 amps. Okay, and you can see whenever I disconnect one of the coils, it slows down. And it's a little more noisy. You can kick into high gear here again. And we'll disconnect this side. And you hear it slow down again back up. So it was really that simple. I kind of wasted my time tearing that motor apart, but I learned a lot. Um, so yeah, if you have one of these motors, don't take it apart because you'll have three 
induction coils in there or three phase motors and so you just have to build three of these circuits and I'll put a diagram at the end of this video so you can see how you can build one of your own but it was really quite a learning experience I think I'll take this one back apart and rewire it the way it was originally and then I can get my maximum uh, torque out of it um, one other thing I want to show you is it's kind of interesting when I, I disconnect one of the coils it really doesn't drop that much in the amperage so right here it's about 4.45 now it's about 0.35 it kind of hovers around in there connect back up so it's only by adding that one extra circuit it's only using a tenth of an amp more and it's almost double the, the amount of torque on this thing. So it's a lot more, a lot more torque than the previous. If I disconnect one of these, it'll stop. Pretty easily get my hand. Anyway. I thought that was pretty exciting. So, anybody out there who's already built one of these just needs to build another circuit and then wire them up together. Um, anyway, there's, there's my finale.